Welcome to part two of the shared transaction setup. Now that we've completed the steps required for the download, we're going to next speak uh, and review how to do the intercompany setup. And that really is uh, here. We have, we want to configure the intercompany settings. We want to configure the subsidiary settings, configure the account settings, and then go ahead and test an advanced intercompany journal just to make sure that we're doing it correctly. If you'll recall, we had just uh, briefly talked about the enable features where we set up the intercompany framework and we set up the multi-subsidiary customer. Now what we want to do is come over here to accounting and there is a setup here called intercompany preferences. Go ahead and select on that. And this is where we come in and we identify a few of the things for the NetSuite auto balancing, okay? See here, um, I've got my default intercompany accounts, the 1130 and 210. Those can be any number you want, but we want to be sure to set those up uh, for um, what we have, okay? Likewise, these income and expense accounts can be whatever you'd like uh, there. The trade currency can be set to anyone that's most likely US dollar. The cross charge output type, if you're using some other features, isn't really important here, but I would tend to use it for what we do, but you can set that. And then of course, if you do want to use the netting, you can turn if you want to allow the per uh, line classifications. I've uh, not turned that on, okay? The second piece that is important is when you use the intercompany framework, you the the customer vendor relationship that NetSuite uses to do the intercompany uh, eliminations and, and management uh, is done with these representing entities. Okay, and so I like to generate click check to do these automatically. And then I just out of habit, I put IC in front of it and you'll see what that likes. Go ahead and save those intercompany preferences. And then from there, we want to go to step two, which is to configure our subsidiary settings. All right. To do that, I'll go to here, company, and then I want to come to subsidiaries. I'll go ahead and click on that. And this is a new button you can see that is generate representing uh, subsidiaries. Okay. If I want to go ahead and click on that, it would it will generate these here that are the representing uh, customer and the representing vendor. You see that IC that's in front of that. And that becomes the one uh, representing entity that will rep that you can use for AP and AR. If I didn't want to generate these uh, uh, automatically, I would need to hit that button. The other place where this can be done is in the subsidiary settings manager. And this, this is a new field when you enable the framework. And you see that this will tell me what, where are they enabled? What are my settings? And then I can actually come in here and let's say I go to the United States, clicking on the gear there will take me to the subsidiary settings page that should look very familiar. Um, here's my, where I can set any defaults I want for the intercompany framework when those come through um, and then anything else that might be necessary. The last part that we have is called configure account settings. Okay. When you come in and you do that by lists, accounting, accounts, all right? When I set this up, I want to make sure that I've identified and configured my accounts correctly. All right. So let's go ahead and just open up a um, one here that we'll use for intercompany receivables at 1130. Let me view that. And what, you, what you'll see here that's really important is really controlling this piece here. It's called eliminate intercompany transactions. When this box is checked, that means that NetSuite is going to assume that any intercompany, any transactions in there that represent an intercompany, you want eliminated. And then at the end of the month, it will create an elimination journal entry to back that out. Why is this important? It's because when we're doing shared transactions, Sometimes we might want to eliminate something like let's say we're we, we have done that, but uh, quite a few uh, times when we're using shared transactions, what we're really doing is we want to move uh, an expense, say like a phone expense from one subsidiary and we want to put that expense in another subsidiary. So it's a permanent movement 
of cost. And in that case, we do not want to eliminate that. We want that to be a permanent transaction. In that case, we would not want this um, box to be checked. We would want it unchecked. So as you're setting up your accounts, think through what ones you would like to have eliminated and what ones you would not. Many customers will use a series of intercompany revenue or expense accounts. As you can see here, I've got an intercompany revenue that's tagged, whereas these are not. Uh, these would represent permanent movements. Again, it's how you want to design it, but these are the elements necessary to do a uh, transaction. From there, what we want to do is let's do a test now. We're going to go to Transactions, Financial, and I want to make an advanced intercompany journal. All right. And what makes this really fantastic is that it allows us to do it through numerous subsidiaries. And we're also able to do this with a bunch of different uh, currencies or anything else we might want. If you look here, what I set up, I'll just come in here and open it, is I made the journal here between Canada and the United States. Uh, a very simple, this happens, all four of these happen to be eliminating, mainly because we, we selected the eliminating ones here. If I wanted to run a quick test on my own, let's go ahead and make a new journal. And we'll start out, this will come from uh, the United States. Okay, we're gonna do it in the US dollar here and the United States. Um, let's just do the expense, um, We'll, we'll send it to our um, favorite is miscellaneous expense. And I'm going to credit that for $10,000 because I don't want this expense. Then I go to Canada and we'll do this with the exact same one, 1690. And I'm moving this expense here for $10,000, all right? So I've done two of the four entries. And from here, since I've set it up, I can actually select hit the auto balancing and this will add the additional lines for me. You see the intercompany receivables, intercompany payables, the eliminations came up and I also have the due to do from subsidiaries have also been set here. So I'm in good shape uh, and here is my currency with respect to the exchange rates on the journal. So my intercompany transaction, advanced intercompany journal is working properly. Now we're ready to actually configure and set up the shared transactions and begin using the tool.